tell me about your hometown. What kind of a, you know, what kind of a feel is it? How many people are there? Uh, I think it's around like 3,000 or something. It's a small city. Small city? Yeah. So Everybody knows everybody. Yeah, exactly. And you like that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, my, like when I was a child, like it's, it was nice to like uh, be like close to everyone, like all the friends and stuff. So you have like close to your family, like grandma, grandpa and stuff like that. So I like it. Was it always your thing to play hockey? Did you always know you were going to be a hockey player? Um, yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, but when I was around like 14, 15 years old, I was like a little bit tired of hockey. Um, I felt it was like too much. Uh, and around that time I played golf. You burned out a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. I played golf too. Uh, played some tournaments and stuff, so. I, like at that time, I want to. I wanted to, like, play play golf. Uh, How good were you? I don't know. Like, uh, what was your handicap? Uh, around one one point five. That's spectacular. Yeah. So, but I was better before <laughs> yeah. than I am right now. So, uh, do you, do you miss that? <laughs> Both like. I like how my life is right now too, like with the hockey and then, yeah, like you can play golf in the summer too with friends right. and stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. okay. What's, what's something they have in Sweden that you don't have here that makes you miss home? Um, good pizza, I think. Really? Yeah. The pizza is better in Sweden than yeah. it is here? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Like uh, some guys in the team ask me the same question, but I, I can't explain it. It's just the, like it's the same like things right. on it, but uh, like it tastes better in Sweden. But there are a thousand places in Grand Rapids you could go for pizza, <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah. no one will make a pizza like, no. like Gus and wants. It's more like more thin yeah. in Sweden too, and more like I don't know, more crispy and thin. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, we're talking about your your. Um, decision to become a hockey player, but it was in, it was in the family. Take me through the, the members of your family who have had great success playing hockey. Yeah, my uh, uncle, uh, Marcus Ragnarsson, played for uh, yeah, Team Sweden in like Olympic Games and played nine years in the NHL, uh, seven years, I think, with the San Jose Sharks, and then two years with the Flyers. So. And then my dad uh, was a ref for like 25 years or something. So, yeah, that's it. How much have they been in your ear to try to make you the player that you are today and perhaps beyond? Uh, I don't know, but like the hockey, uh, like I felt like I grew up with hockey. And uh, remember when I was a kid and we flew from Sweden to USA to uh, visit when Marcus was playing in uh, San Jose and the Little Feather. So uh, it's been a lot of hockey when I grew up. So, yeah, so I think. Yeah. Um, most players, most young players, I think, are attracted to end to end rushes and being a forward or a winger or a centerman. Fewer want to play on the blue line, become defensemen. What led you to become a defenseman? I don't know, really. I think. A little bit, of course, because of Marcus, uh, my uncle there. Uh, and then when I was a kid, like from like nine to thirteen or something, uh, my coach always played me as a D, and yeah, and that's like I've been playing D since that that kind of day. So. And and is patience a part of your personality that leads you to be um, an, an especially good defenseman? I don't know, really. Uh, I but don't. you can see the ice, right? You yeah. can you you love that part of the game, yeah. right? The anticipation of being a defenseman. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, I feel that like the hockey in Sweden is a little bit different than here too. Like uh, you have to be more patient in in Sweden, I think. 
uh, it's more like keep the possession of the puck and not play it like here you just rim it around and like glass out and stuff so I think you have to be more like patient with the puck at home uh, yeah and the bigger ice um, obviously affects some yeah, of that of what kind of an adjustment has that been for you um, I think it's been pretty good uh, I feel like better and better um, sometimes it's it's been tough uh, uh, like it's all about to not make mistakes I think uh, here like in Sweden you if you don't have anything when you carry the puck up you just turn turn back and then play DD uh, here it's if you don't have anything you just like rim it around or like play glass out like I said before so it's kind of different it's your third year with the organization, your first in Grand Rapids. Take me through each of the years and how, um, how each year has been you know, special uh, in your own mind in, in terms of growth. Yeah, my first year uh, when I got drafted there, I uh, played in the second division in Sweden. I uh, had my ankle, uh, uncle as a, a D coach there. Um, and uh, yeah, I got drafted by Detroit. Uh, then after that year, uh, I signed with uh, Frölunda in uh, SHL, uh, the top league in Sweden there. And uh, yeah, it was a really good year last year. Uh, we won both the uh, CHL, it's like European tournament, sure. Sure. Uh, and then the Swedish league too. So it was a fun year and I learned a lot and uh, uh, like how like how to like how to win and um, we had uh, Joel Lundqvist mm -hmm. you know Henry mm -hmm. Lundqvist's brother yeah. as a captain and uh, I learned a lot from him last year uh, and some other guys too uh, so that was a really good year and now now I'm here so what's it like coming from Europe to play in the American League how much of a how much of an adjustment or a step has that been for you um, of course, like the I think the biggest thing is like outside the rink, like to to live here alone and um, um, like the culture is a little bit different and like talk talk English. Uh, English is very good, by the way. Oh, thank you. But uh, I it's been better now. Like the when I <laughs> came here, uh, like in school, I had big trouble with it. So. Uh, but it's getting better and better. Uh, so, yeah. But people don't think about that. Um, living on your own at your age has to be a, a big adjustment, especially coming to a, a fairly large city like, like Grand Rapids, right? Yeah, like I lived on my own like last year too in uh, Gothenburg. It's like five hour uh, drive from, from home. But you still feel that you can like go home when you want to, uh, you know? Uh, but now it's like so far away, so it's, uh, but it's, it's been good. Uh, I can't complain about that. But. What specific things about your game are you trying to, to work on or, or you're being told to work on to take the big next step to the National Hockey League? I think the biggest part is uh, that I have to work on is my skating, uh, like be faster and be more like mobile. Uh, on the blue line and like move with a puck on the blue line. I think that's the biggest part. What are you hearing from uh, Sean Horkoff and Dan Cleary, who are the guys who are sort of, you know, sort of reminding you do this? Here's what we're looking for from you. Those kinds of things. Uh, like usually, I talk to, of course, Horkoff and then uh, Cronwall too. So it's been good. Uh, it's always like some. They send, send us some clips and stuff that from games and uh, from game situations. Uh, and then, of course, like the workout in the gym. And we have uh, like some skating coaches coming in like once, uh, like for a few days every, every month. So, yeah, keep working on, on that stuff. It's got to be cool to have Nick Cronwall. Yeah. Sort of uh, putting his arm around you here, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. What, yeah. what, what kinds of, what did you know about him before he began working with you? 
Um, of course, he's a legend in, in Sweden, like Lidstrom and the other guys too. Uh, but uh, and you always, when you were like when I was a child and watching like the uh, World Championship and stuff, and you saw like his big hits and stuff, you always watch it on like YouTube and stuff. So it's cool to have him here. Have you told him that? Does he know that you were a fan of his when you were a kid? Oh, and have. does that make him feel old if you uh, if you tell him that? Yeah, maybe. So, but uh, no, I haven't told him. But I think I think he know that. All right. Yeah. What's life like here in Grand Rapids? What do you do when you're uh, when you're done practicing, or you don't have a game, or you have an off day here? Um, not much. Uh, just hang out with teammates. Uh, live next to um, Joe Hickett. Hang out with like teammates and. Uh, Watching sports on TV and stuff. I like actually like the American football now. Like the when I came here like four months ago, that was the worst sport I knew, and now it's like one of my favorite. Who's your team? Who are you rooting for? Who have I, you? I, I don't really for? have a favorite team, but I like to watch like some players like Lamar Jackson. He's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And with the championship games on Sunday and the Super Bowl, yeah. is there a part of you that you know thinks? All right, I'm going to be at a party somewhere watching these games, or this means something to me now. Uh, I don't know. Maybe usually we go to like a sport bar or something, or watch it at home. So let's see. Okay. Um, obviously, with your name Lindstrom, you're forever going to be tied to Lindstrom. Um, how many times are you asked the question about whether you're related to him? <laughs> Too many. Uh, no, uh, I think some people know that that it's like two different names, but <laughs> like it feels like like fifty percent of the people don't know that it's different names. So uh, I've had a few questions about that. How big is Nick Lidstrom back home? Uh, one of our biggest like hockey players ever. Um, they like I said before when you were like a child and watching the hockey on TV. And I remember 2006, I think, the Olympic Games when he scored a game winner against Finland in the final there. Uh, that's a big memory I have of him. Have you met him? Do you know him? No, never. Will you be nervous when you meet him? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. I was nervous when I met uh, Cromwell too. <laughs> First time. Playing with Mo, you guys are you know, playing the same position, connected. I mean, how much are you sort of pushing each other to uh, to take the next step? Uh, of course, we have like we compete hard, like every every day, every practice, and it's a lot of fun to play with Mo too. It's he's a good guy, and uh, I sit sitting next to him in the locker room too. Uh, sometimes it's like he talks so much, so it, sometimes it's too much, so I have to <laughs> tell him to be quiet, but uh, it's fun too. Yeah, he's good. a good guy.